Hey, what's up guys? This is this is your boy Carl Hungus and uh, bringing you a little TDM here on Warhawk with the suppressed uh, suppressed ripper. I believe I go 22 and 5 or 22 and 3, something like that in this game. So it's another pretty solid team deathmatch game playing with my buddy Trojan Butt Ranger. We'll do some live commentaries with him one of these days. You'll definitely love him. But today I figured I'd tell you a little bit about myself and well, with me, one thing, of course you guys don't know this yet, but I'll do some, do some, answer some questions down the road that you guys have for me, or do some things you might not know about me as we get further down the road with this YouTube thing, but I have the worst fucking luck in the world with women. I don't know what it is, I'm not, not a terribly bad looking guy, you know, you can see from my picture, you know, I'm not... Not the best looking guy, not the worst looking guy, and I'm you know, a pretty good personality, pretty funny guy, but I have the worst fucking luck with women. And I figured today I'd tell you a little story about the worst first date I've ever been on in my life. So, a couple of years ago, I ended up breaking up with one of my long-term girlfriends. We were together over a year, and things were looking pretty good. I mean, we even talked about marriage and shit like that, but... Uh, it didn't end up going that way, and after we broke up, I took a few months, a few months away from the scene. Probably, probably a good six months, if I remember correctly. My friend decided to try to hook me up with one of his friends. So I'm thinking, you know, uh, my friend was Colby, by the way. He's a really good, really good guy, pretty, pretty conservative guy. You know, he's well liked, good personality, you know, good talker. But he, he says, you know, hey, Bo, we're going we're gonna to try setting you up with one of my friends. And I said, oh, what the hell, let's, let's give it a try, you know, because I was struggling to find people and meet people. And at that time, I was uh, pretty much maxed out on my credits up at, uh, up at college. I'm, I'm a double major. I was a double major in school, so I have two bachelor's degrees, one in biology and one in philosophy. But uh, getting back to the, the main points of the story here... <clears throat> Yeah, of course, fucking host migration. Somebody's always got to get pissed at the start of a game. But anyways, uh, he decided to uh, ask me to go with him on a double date, him and his now wife, uh, to go on a double date, go out to dinner and maybe do some ice skating, some bowling, do something like that afterwards. So, you know, we go we go out to dinner and things things are going all right, you know. Having, having some fun conversations. They're really big political people. So lots of lots of talk of conservatism and different things like that. So you know it makes the makes the night kind of interesting because you know when you bring politics into it, you're you're asking for a fight every time, every time doesn't matter. But you know we get through the dinner date and of course somehow I beat everybody down to the ice skating rink after dinner, which makes zero sense to me because I drive like a fucking old man. It's just just the way I learned to drive. So you know I'm I get there first and of course beat them there and it ends up being so busy that we don't even end up you know skating so Colby sends me a text or calls me I can't remember which one and he says to me you know hey do you want to do you want to go do something else you know let's how about we go around and look at Christmas lights and I'm thinking you know that sounds like a pretty good idea you know we're gonna be hanging out all of us together you know having good conversation doing something kind of fun romantic at the same time well, that's what I thought was going to happen, and of course, of course, you know, with my luck, nothing, nothing, nothing. So I get back to his house, you know, because I beat him all down there, so I get back up there, and we decide to go through the same, same three fucking neighborhoods for probably a good hour and a half. Looking at the same fucking lights, the same fucking Santa, the same bullshit, the same fucking cars, the same fucking tires, snow, footprints, you name it. We're seeing the same stuff over and over again for a good hour and a half. Well, a couple things that Kobe neglected to tell me about this girl that he was trying to set me up with also along the way that I learned in the car in the back seat, which was kind of awkward, was that the girl was at one time married. And she was probably about five years older than me also. So, you know, I'm at the time, I don't know when I am, 22, so she's she's pushing 30 just about. Well, she was married. She's now She was going through a divorce, or she's now divorced. I can't remember which one it was. But, you know, he's trying to set me up with this girl that I find out later down the road didn't want a fucking relationship, you know. And 
and, and it's almost like you know, you know, great friendship there, buddy. You know, and I, I don't understand this shit. You know, friends, friends supposed to have your back. You know, and this shit happens. But um, yeah, and I remember the next day I went in to see my best friend Steiner. Try to get him on here one of these days. He's funny as hell. But anyways. Going to Steinbeck's. Well, you know, how's how'd the date go? Did you get any? You know, did you did you kiss her or anything like that? I said, nah. He goes, well, you know, did it did it go pretty well? And I said, well, imagine sitting in the back seat with a girl who doesn't want to be with you anyways. Who you're set up for fucking failure as it is. Driving around the same four fucking neighborhoods, looking at the same fucking lights, talking about the same shit for a good hour and a half. So that's uh, that's one of my good. Uh, Worst, worst first dates ever. I've got, I've got some more to share with you. Um, I've got a lot of good things on the dating front I can talk about with you guys that you'll find pretty good. Hopefully you'll find this one pretty funny, but, um, yeah, just, if, if you can imagine the most awkward fucking time, you know, getting set up on a blind date with somebody who you don't know at all. And like I said, I'm a pretty good jokester. I'm a pretty, I'm pretty good bringing up conversation topics and stuff. But you know, I get, I get put out there with a girl who is, who is married, now divorced, and doesn't want a relationship. But hey, Bo, let's set you up. Let's, let's do you a favor and put you with this girl who has no interest in you whatsoever. But you know, that's, that's my life in a nutshell. If it, if it can go wrong, it's going to go wrong. And uh, <laughs> so I figured I'd share that with you guys. And like I said, I've got a lot, of, a lot of stuff to talk about. I've got tons of stories for you. Lots, like I said, lots of dating stories. Whether it's dating, uh, you know, dating somebody who, Jesus, I don't, I don't even know how to put it into words. But it just always seems like I'm with the wrong person at the at the wrong time. And it's just always, always something's fucked up and stupid. You know, you. It just, you'll see, you'll see down the road, I'll, I'll definitely give you some more, give you some more stuff to laugh at and make fun of, because I'm, I'm one of those guys that, you know, I think in order to get through life, you gotta, you gotta enjoy yourself, you gotta have fun, you gotta laugh at yourself, because, you know, we're not, we're not here that long, so, you gotta try to, try to find a little enjoyment in what you're doing, and that's also another one of these reasons why I wanted to start this YouTube channel, because, you know, you get to meet a lot of cool people out here, you know, on video and you know there's a lot of great youtubers out there and I'll definitely have a segment one of these days talking about my favorite youtubers and kinda kinda who you know made me wanna do do this you know really really enjoy enjoy what I'm doing and you know make make the videos that I'm making I'm kinda rambling right now just to finish up this uh, gameplay here but yeah, love, love that. Teammates. That's, that's one thing I hate about Team Deathmatch. You can't trust your fucking teammates. There'll be a guy standing two feet from them. Well, if I can't shoot him, I'm just going to let him watch my teammate die. But uh, that's that's lovely Team Deathmatch, and that's also one of the reasons why I love the competitive scene, where there's a little less bullshit, and you're playing objective-based games. But I do like Team Deathmatch once in a while. It's fun for something different. And typically my friends and buddies really, really enjoy Team Deathmatch, so throw a suppressor out on my gun and go bitch mode, you know, get a few sneaky kills here. I can finish out the last two kills of the match here, coming up pretty quick, but, yeah, I hope you guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed, you know, like I said, always, comments are always welcome, likes, dislikes, you know, let me, let me know how I can improve it, you know, I definitely have some more stories to come, but, oh, look at that terrible accuracy, but, we get the kill anyways, and, well, guys, you know, thanks for listening, thanks for, thanks for watching. Hope, uh, hope you're enjoying what I'm doing. i got some competitive gameplay coming up here. But anyways, have a good night, guys. We'll talk to you later.